In this video, I'll be going through the 2011 Atoms and Radioactivity exam. Question 1. At different times, scientists have proposed various descriptions or models of the atom to match experimental evidence available. The model that Thompson proposed was called the Plum Pudding Model. Describe this model. Thompson's model consisted of a positively charged mass with negative electrons embedded throughout. These positive and negative charges combine so that the atom is neutral overall. Geiger and Marsden performed a series of experiments under the direction of Ernest Rutherford which led to a new model of the atom. A model of the gold foil experiment is shown below. For each of the conclusions given below, state which observation from the experiment provides evidence that most of the mass of the atom is concentrated in a tiny region, which Rutherford called the nucleus, most particles passed through the gold unaffected, a very small number bounced back. The nucleus is positively charged, a small amount of positive alpha particles were deflected. Rutherford included several features in the experiment due to the characteristics of the alpha particles. Discuss the reason for each of the features below. The source of the alpha particles is at the end of a narrow lead tube. This was to direct the particles into a thin beam. The vacuum chamber. This is because alpha particles can only travel a short distance in air. And the zinc sulfide screen produced flashes of light when struck by a particle. Question 2. Three sources of radiation are shown below. These sources emit radiation into a magnetic field that is directed into the page. On the diagram, draw arrows to show the path of each type of radiation as it passes through the magnetic field. Although in reality, alpha and beta radiation have different speeds, for the purposes of this question, assume that they have approximately the same speed. Because this is a magnetic field, we're going to need to use the right hand rule. Take your right hand, and because the magnetic field is into the page, we point our fingers into the page. Our thumb points in the direction of positive charge movement, which because the alpha particle is positive, is towards the right. In doing so, your palm should be facing upwards, indicating that the alpha particles are going to experience an upwards force. And so our path is going to look something like this. Because beta radiation is negative, it's going to be deflected in the opposite direction, and furthermore, because it has less mass, it's going to deflect with a greater curve. Gamma radiation is uncharged, and so goes straight through unaffected. Give detailed reasons for each of the shapes that you have drawn in the above diagram. We know that alpha radiation is deflected upwards via the right hand slap rule. We also know that beta radiation is deflected downwards via the right hand slap rule and is deflected more than alpha due to its small mass. Gamma radiation is unaffected as it has no charge. Describe what each of alpha, beta and gamma radiation is, and discuss what happens inside a nucleus when it produces each of the three types of radiation. In your answer, you will need to state what happens to the atomic charge number and the mass nucleon number. Alpha radiation consists of two protons and two neutrons, or in other words is a helium nucleus. The nucleus loses two protons, so the atomic number reduces by two, and it loses four nucleons, so the mass number reduces by four. Beta radiation is an electron. A neutron decays into a proton, increasing the atomic number by one, and an electron which is emitted. The amount of nucleons is the same, so the mass number is unchanged. Gamma radiation is an electromagnetic wave. Following a decay, energy is released, but the atomic and mass numbers are unaffected. Question 3. Complete the equation showing alpha decay for radium-226. Since we know our radon has undergone alpha decay, we can substitute our alpha particle in with an atomic mass of 4 and an atomic number of 2. The atomic masses must add to 226, and the atomic numbers must add to 88, and so 226 minus 4 gives us 222, and 82 minus 2 gives us 86. Describe what is meant by the term half-life of a radioactive nuclide. This is the time for half a radioactive sample's nuclides to decay. A Geiger counter is an instrument used to detect radiation. 
A Geiger counted attacks 40 counts per second from a sample of iodine-131. The half-life of iodine-131 is 8 days. Using the axes given below, sketch a graph showing the count rate from the sample of iodine-131 over a period of 24 days. We know that our count rate is starting at 40 and that after one half-life, which is 8 days, our count rate will have halved. Half of 40 is 20. After another 8 days, which is 16 days, our count rate will have halved again. Half of 20 is 10. And finally, after another 8, we're at 24 days, where our count rate has once again halved. Half of 10 is 5. So now we just need to draw our line. From the graph, deduce the activity of the sample of iodine 131 after 20 days. Here is our 20 days, where my curve, which is albeit a little bit wonky, shows a count of roughly 7. The assessment schedule allows for some wriggle room, accepting anything between 6 and 8. 